2024 year of the catch-up is over. And if we look at what happened over the year, we can roughly extrapolate what will happen in 2025. Bamboo Lab dominated 2023, and that essentially bled into 2024, with the A-series being released at the end of the year. Everyone was playing catch-up in 2023, but by the end of the year, not one manufacturer had put out a multicolored device that could compete with the AMS or a printer to match the X1. It actually wasn't until summer of last year that Anycubic released the Ace Pro, but that was for an unenclosed bed slinger. The hype was less. Creality did release the K1 series in 2023, however there was no significant upgrade to the X1 unless you consider the size of the Max version, and of course there was no multicolor system, so again the hype was less. Now I use both K printers, they're right behind me, the K1 and the K1 Max, I use them every day. I'm very happy with their performance, however when I look back at 2024 and late 2023, I don't think, wow. Yes, we have a much wider choice of printers these days and the price has been reduced, but out of all of the manufacturers in 2024 and FDM, all of the big ones, there has really only been one that have gone the extra mile. And it's weird because this was a release that wasn't super well celebrated because it appealed to a very specific segment in the 3D printing community, those that needed rapid prototyping. And it, this exemplifies pretty well where the trend is going. And it's these guys, it's FL Sun because they were the only company who could develop a printer that did something more than the X1 on its own could do, albeit only speed. Now, I don't want to glorify speed as the end all of innovation far from that, but when all of the other companies see what Bamboo Lab are doing, uh, and let's be honest, they did a really good job, they try to emulate that and do their own version. And what does FL Sun do? Not that. They continue their speciality of Delta printers, a printer type that is hard to design, it scares beginners, uh, but they did improve the speed to what twice, more than twice, what the Bamboo Lab X1 can do. And actually all other competing brands. Let me reiterate, speed is not everything. And this is why you don't see the S1 in any of the top printers of 2024. Innovation and technological development, no matter how much I like them, does not make a best selling printer, it is a balance. So if I type in best selling printers of 2024, first result is CNET and lo and behold, best overall is the A1 combo. Best precision is the Mark IV S, best budget is Cobra 3 and Bamboo occupies the others of course with the A1 being the best for beginners. All 3DP says something similar and Tom's hardware again pretty similar with Bamboo Lab occupying several positions in Prusa and Creality 2. Bamboo offered something that almost nobody else did when the X1 combo was released. It was fast, clean, easy to use, versatile, relatively cost effective for what it did. Prusa could compete on those levels with the XL, except with cost. It was quite expensive. The cost is difficult for beginners to stomach. In fact, Bamboo might have actually done better after the XL was released because the next new thing, uh, the tool changer, was so much more expensive than the X1 combo. The hype, again, was less. The XL is a fantastic machine, no doubt about that, but I think Prusa realized that it wasn't going to be the next big thing, and the Mark IV S came out, and then the Core 1 came out, and the Core 1, great printer, saw it smurf, really awesome, but it's, it, it just didn't have the hype that the X1 did. So what now? The X1, fast, clean, easy to use, versatile, affordable. Are we just going to go down the copycat route and have comparatives faster, cleaner, easier to use, versatile affordable -er. This is probably the way it's gonna go down. Prior to the X1, there was a period of stagnancy in the 3D printing market, pretty much since 2018 when the Ender 3 was released. And there was only tiny improvements, things like auto bed leveling, uh, factory boot loaders, and linear advance. And that was really only broken by Clipper firmware. Um, Clipper got rid of a lot of things that were impeding makers, and the open source community has always been far ahead of every major company in 3D printing when it comes to software because it's open source. It is available for everyone to build upon. You don't need a multi-million dollar company in order to work on that. You just need an internet connection and a grasp of Python. And this is probably where the next big thing is going to come from as well, but it's gonna take more than just comparatives like Clipper did when it came out. 
Nobody wants a fast printer that has bad quality. Nobody wants a cheap printer that is slow and nobody wants a great multi-material system that is too expensive. You gotta have a balance with these things, but you gotta give something extra as well. Bamboo Lab put all of the coolest new developments in one printer. So firstly, input shaping. It has been around for decades in engineering, but no one thought to put it in a 3D printer until a few years ago. Second, an easy browser-based interface, something that was started by Octoprint. And thirdly, an MMU that is reliable, something that was first commercially done by Prusa. And they melded that with their own ideas and they created awesome printers. What companies are gonna do now is find those new developments and package it in their own device. And if they have some talent, they'll introduce their own ideas and they'll make a great printer. In the last few months, we have seen some movement. The K2 Plus is essentially the bigger brother of the X1, but it does have improvements. The acceleration is considerably increased. It has a heated build chamber and it has a hot end that goes up to 350 degrees. A similar thing you can see on the Chidi Tech Plus 4 and of course the aforementioned FL Sun S1. The trend seems to be moving to a more engineering area. You don't need a heated chamber or a 350 degree hot end to print something like a cute Minion, but they're doing it anyway. Why? Well, there is a market there that once depended on very expensive machines to do a rapid prototyping, but consumer level devices like the ones you've seen over the last year have reached a point where they can do a very similar task at a fraction of the cost. Expect to see more of that in 2025. The flagship printers will be application focused instead of based on something new and novel, and probably the budget printers will follow the same post 2018 trend with small improvements and of course price reductions. But of course, if we're lucky, the new thing will come from the DIY community. Maybe we'll get a printer that doesn't require supports, maybe miniaturization of hot ends and extruders. Maybe we'll see very cost-effective multi-material systems or actual full color printers. All of these exist in prototype phase already. Whether any of these will make it to finished devices that are accessible to average members of the community this year, I don't know, it might take longer than that. We just gotta wait and see.